Martinson and you are watching another episode of Conversations with Cupid and today I have one of my favorite people Tamar Geller. Yay! One of my favorite doggies and her favorite moms. Yeah we love Tamar because she's a dog lady. The, dog loved, lady. the loved dog is one of Tamar's amazing books that I'm just loving reading. Oh right thank you honey. Yeah. So Thank you. Tamar has a dog center in West Los Angeles, and that's where Macy stays when I go out of town. And I, she loves it so much that when I picked her up the first time, we're in the car. She's looking back at the center, crying like I want to go back with my buddies. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> sweet! I tell you the stories that I hear from people. It's unbelievable because we treat, we see the dogs as individuals. We do not see them as animals. We do not see them as you know, commodity. We truly see the individuality of each and every one. Mm -hmm. And they know it, you know, just like people, you know, when you're talking to someone and they see you versus mm -hmm. those who don't get you. Exactly. It's the same. Yeah. And she, when well, I bring her in, she runs up to one of the, you know, the guys that, that work <laughs> there, she knows him and she, they, I feel so good because when I go away, I don't have to think about her. Like, and yes. then they, then I love what you guys do. You send a picture and an email of her too. And I love yes. that. Yes, yes, yes. So I've recommended you like crazy. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. So thank for you. people who are not familiar with you, just give a little synopsis on your background because it's amazing. You, you're from Israel and you were in the army and you were observing wolves and you had a difficult, challenging childhood and that brought you to the amazing unfoldment of your life's path. That's true. That's true. I, I was born and raised in Israel. I was in... Um, intelligence officer with the elite special forces, the one unit uh, that listened to the prime minister and I, that's when I was introduced to dogs in their capacity and I, when I finished doing my service instead of the, instead of the mandatory two years, I did four years mm -hmm. so I can be with those phenomenal people, yeah. I went to clear my mind in the desert and when I was in the desert I encountered a person who was doing uh, behavioral research on wolves and I tagged along. And that's when I saw the difference between how the wolves are doing it and how the military is doing it. The military, by the way, is no longer using the methods that they used way back then. Thank goodness. No, it's, it's completely different. But it was really, truly transformative and really a beginning of a spiritual journey in a way. Yeah. Because through the dogs, I learned so much about relationships and about people and about how to show up and how to interact and what does non-judgment looks like. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's phenomenal. And um, I came here just for a visit and one thing led to another. Uh, basically, I was, I saw that Pink Floyd going to play and I wanted to stay just a little bit longer to see Pink Floyd. And I volunteered for a dog trainer who, when he got a call from a person in Beverly Hills who his Cocker Spaniel was stealing socks. He's like, I'm not going to do it. You're going to do it. I'm like, I don't even speak English. But I went and it was very clear from what I studied from the wolves that it was not a dog problem. It was really an attention seeking problem because the only time the owner gave him attention was when the dog was stealing socks. Okay. Now, how many times we see kids who misbehave to get attention from the parents or a husband misbehave yeah. or wife misbehave? We see it all the time. So when I fixed the problem, and within two days the problem was gone, turned out it was Kenny G, the saxophone player, uh -huh. and he referred me, and all of a sudden Goldie Hawn was calling me, and Whoopi Goldberg, and Nicolette Sheridan, and I Oprah. became, well, <laughs> Oprah came later, I was, first became the resident dog expert for the Today Show, uh -huh. and, uh, and Oprah became my client, and when Simon & Schuster you know, convinced me to write a book because I felt I have nothing to say. Uh, Oprah called Simon & Schuster and said that she wants to launch it. 
Wow. So it's a very huge New York Times bestseller and was translated to many languages. And, and I'm very grateful because it made a lot of people understand their dogs. And, yes. and I think in a way that's kind of like what you do because a lot of men need you to understand women. <laughs> And That's a lot of women right. need you to understand men. And, and it's kind of like you're like an interpreter and I'm an interpreter. You know what I mean? And I do feel that in my second book, I did a whole page on why I believe dogs are very much like men or men are like dogs. And, you know, I love dogs. Yeah. You know, so it was not a deg- derogatory right. at all. But I think that just like we get along with a completely different species, like you are with Macy, Mm -hmm. and I'm with Oliver, who wants me to throw him the tennis ball over here. (laughs) You can see constantly bringing me the tennis ball. Um, We, with people like you, can help. We can communicate. Although we are supposedly the same species, women and men, we're actually very, very different. Oh, so different. It's, it's a, it's, I can't even believe we can get get along at all or get together at all because we see the big divorce rate and the way yes. women try to com- communicate with men as if they're women and men think the women talk too much and the men, you know all these things but I mean I actually get along better I've always had an affinity to, to animals I mean yes. always I'm like a Saint Francis or something I mean I'd yes. rather spend the day with Macy than a human of course look Dogs, I think, they're the most spiritual. You mentioned spirituality. I agree. Uh, the dogs will never judge you. They don't care. Like you, I heard you say on a news program, they don't care if you're a billionaire. They don't care if you're fat or thin or old or, you know. What no, color. I always say Oprah's dogs didn't care if she gained weight or lost weight. As a matter of fact, Oprah's dogs don't know she's Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They love her. She's uncon- just a great mom. Yeah. It's unconditional. They live in the moment. Uh, they they just give you pure love. I learned so much. Um, well, I do believe the dogs give conditional love. I do. Oh. I disagree actually. And the reason why is because when I do my nonprofit work with war veterans and shelters, it's the same dog, but the dog responds differently. So it is condition their love, and it condition on how the person in front of them shows up. Okay, so not condition on whether you're Oprah or have a million dollars or no. thin, but condition on how the interaction is. It's exactly. Yeah. Are you showing up or are you just dialing it in? Mm-hmm. You know, people, you know, may not know how to read it that easily and they also may feel like, oh, you know, that's as a powerful person. I should pay attention to him. Dogs, they don't judge. They don't care if you are the president of a country. If you are not showing up for them, they will not pay attention to you. They'll pay attention to the gardener. Right. And that's what's so beautiful about it. Yeah, yeah. And then dogs, it's funny because I, when I found Macy, immediately we had this bond. Now, she lives with both my husband and I, and he adores her. He kisses her, calls him, you know, hello, my daughter. You know, we don't have kids. But she follows me everywhere. She's in my office when, when yes. I'm working. She, If I happen to be gone, she'll go hang out in his studio. Yes. But somehow... See? Yeah, she. I mean, I'm number one, and if I'm gone, she'll be looking out the window. And yes. it's interesting how even though she always was living with the both of us, I don't know if that's because I found her or if it's just she no, felt that. No, I don't that. think it's about who found her. It's uh, you are her person. And it's just like when we choose a partner, mm-hmm. you know, if we have a situation where we can have a few guys we can go out with, uh-huh. They're going to be probably more than one, but there's one who really we connect with. And then it can be close second maybe and third. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like how dogs are. Right. And and, and that's the beauty because children are also very much like dogs will tell you the truth. It's not who brings the paycheck home or who feeds them. It's who connects with them. Mm -hmm. And it's usually with children and dogs. Mm -hmm. It's done through play. Yes. Or what... Dr. Um, John Gottman coined as love mapping. Oh. Uh-huh. Remember we talked about yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but love mapping is like, if I'm going to give you a gift certificate to Home Depot mm-hmm. versus giving you a gift certificate to Nordstrom, you'd probably be happier with Nordstrom. I would. So love mapping, <laughs> you know, me too. Love mapping, you have to see what's the person, what's the being in front of you mm-hmm. likes. So your way of reading her love map make her feel yeah. that you get it more than your husband does. Mm-hmm. 
And it's interesting, she somehow, I think she just came in this way to the world, but she is the sweetest. You've met her. She yes. is sweet. She is like an angel. Everybody that sees her yes. wants her. They, they say, I've never seen a dog like this. She doesn't bark. I take her for a walk at least twice a day around the neighborhood. And we go around my neighborhood, and every I would say 90% of the dogs behind the gates and stuff, they're going like berserk, like these vicious dogs that they would kill us if they had the chance to get out. And Macy doesn't say a word. She doesn't. She's just like, "What are you barking about?" She doesn't yes. respond. And all these other dogs are going crazy. So, but, but you know, you do see with people, and you see with dogs, there's level, different level of evolvement. Some dogs, I look at them, and they're not dogs. Lovely, but dogs. And some dogs, you look at them, and you can see that there's more going on. It's kind of like when you know I go on a date, and some guys I'm with, they are children doesn't matter how old the body is they're yeah. just not getting it okay and some so this could be past lives i mean we get a little woo woo here i'm very woo woo but she could have I'm come in with some other you know they're coming in from some other experiences yeah and she she's also very, very young soul versus an old soul absolutely mm -hmm. yeah and all feel it we all feel it with certain people that we can connect on certain level or not right exactly so she is it's almost like they're acting like dogs, and she's looking like, but why? <laughs> <laughs> I know. She's like, what are you doing? Um, and speaking of that, you know, I, taking her for a walk, that is her favorite thing in the world to do. Um, even no matter how much we play here, no matter how much she goes in our yard, you know, I, I know somebody who has a couple dogs and never walks them. So these <gasps> little dogs live their whole life in the house and in the small backyard that has oh. a and then the person will say, yeah, but, you know, they don't miss what they don't get. And, um, but I, I think, yeah. I mean, I feel really bad and it's, I kind of try to, I've said a few things, but I hold my tongue because it's not really my business. But I feel really bad because the dogs, that's, they want to get out and get their pee mail, like you say. And right, yeah. how important is it to walk a dog, even if they have a yard, even if they're loved and played with and how important is that? It's extremely important to have a variety in life because no one, and particularly not a social animal, can thrive when they live in a groundhog day situation. Mm -hmm. Every day is the same thing. A lot of times you see with these dogs that they're overweight or obese because the only thing that they have to look forward in the day is the food. Mm -hmm. And that's not healthy. You need, I mean, we all see dogs who dream at night or during yeah. the day and the hands are moving and you know, they're making noises and everything is because they're processing what they have experienced. You must give a variety to every social animal and dogs are certainly a social animal. But you know what? I like you, I choose my battles. Yeah. Because they're way worse. So if I have to get up in arms about something, it's gonna be about you know, abuse, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and not, not about that. If You know, if I have the opportunity, I will say something, but I'm not going to go into war for that. Right, right. And and in your book, you say, you say that there's seven basic needs. So we're speaking about the exercise. The sense of security, companionship, understanding the hierarchy, surprises and excitement. That's what it is. There, the surprise That's and excitement. Right. Food and exercise, mental stimulation, and love and connection. That's exactly. And unfortunately, a lot of dogs don't get mental stimulation properly. So that's why this, we see behaviors such as barking, digging, and chewing mm -hmm. happening in dogs. So whenever somebody calls me and they say, my dog is misbehaving, the first question I need to ask the dog is, which one of, which one of your needs, or more of one need, is not being met because what the dog is doing when they're misbehaving they're trying to meet a need by doing it using a vehicle that is accepted in a dog be in a dog society mm -hmm. in our society it's not acceptable to bark when you're lonely right. or to chew when you're bored yeah. do you know what I mean yeah. so it's kind of like instead of making a dog wrong it's like let me find out what it is that you need and let me figure out because it's my responsibility, because I'm the grown-up here, mm -hmm. to meet your needs mm -hmm. in a way that we both can feel good about. Which is, once again, not any different than a relationship. 
Exactly. We can always make the other person wrong. Mm -hmm. But how about, instead of making the other person wrong, is to be curious, to ask why. Mm -hmm. Why is it that you don't want me to do X, Y, and Z? Why is it that you are not willing to do that? And to start a conversation of, of really understanding what where is it coming from? Mm -hmm. As opposed to, I have a stupid dog. I have a dominant dog. That's the one thing that drives me nuts because I rarely meet a dominant dog. I may have met one or two in 30 years and I'm working with dogs. So, do you know what I mean? So, it's really, it's, it, it's so much the same. When you understand your dog and when you can really connect with your dog and get them to thrive, chances are you build the skills in you mm -hmm. to use it in other relationships in your life, work relationship, romantic relationship, parenting. Yes, yeah, it, it's all I goes mean, hand in hand. It really is. And mm -hmm. the vocabulary, you talk about that. I mean, and you said that dogs can learn 150 words, I think even more. I, I think certain well, dogs, yes. right, that's probably average, but there's other breeds. I mean, Macy knows so many words, already, and sometimes she'll know a word. I said, how did she even know that one? She, they're yes. listening. They're yeah, listening. border collies. Border collies can learn up to a thousand words. Yes, yeah, you know, a book so it's about absolutely, one it's mm -hmm. it's absolutely right. And you know, I really love. I mean, I, I'm sure you read. It's one of my favorite books ever, The Four Agreements. Yes, I've read it many times. Love that. Me book. too. It's a book that I constantly read. And one of the four agreements is be impeccable with your word. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, as dog owners. We say something we don't mean, sit down. So I look at them, so which one is it, sit or down? Mm -hmm. okay. You know, people say sit down. They say good dog. I say, what exactly did your dog do that you said good dog? Oh, he did so and such and such. And I said, I didn't know. Your dog didn't know. Say, good calm, mm -hmm. good drop. Oh, okay. good, you know, yeah, yeah. impeccable with your words. And also we have research available to us from a university affiliated with Harvard that Dogs emotionally and developmentally are like two to three year old toddlers. Mm -hmm. And you know our parents take the time yeah. to use words. Yes. The toddler. And I say do it with your dog because number one, it's gonna be easier to communicate. You can say to your dog their friends' names and you see who they wants to go to. Yeah. Say Cricket, do you wanna go to Daisy, Shadow? Or Rocky and Cricket gonna respond and I'm like, okay, we're going today to see Shadow. Yeah. No, uh, Cricket, do you want to eat? Cricket, drink. I mean, literally, you can communicate with them the way you communicate yeah. to a toddler. Mm-hmm. I talk to Macy all the time. Have I sing to her? Talk to her constantly. Yes. Yeah, and she loves that. Yeah. And that's why she knows more words than you even realize. Just like children. Yeah. It's it's uh, and then even it's so funny. I was going to give her a bath today, and she saw me getting out the shampoo and then I saw the look on her face then when I came to get her she was under the bed <laughs> she likes the blow dry somehow she doesn't like the bath I don't know yes yes a lot of dogs don't yeah it's interesting put leave a worst I put leave a worst on the because I wash cricket in the sink in the kitchen okay. so leave a worst on the on the the edge of the sink uh -huh. she's just standing and licking and I'm washing yeah I wash her in the sink the only time the only time she gets it, so she's not associating it with bad experience. Yeah. Well, I want to ask you one more question. Um, I, I This came up because I was watching some videos of you online, and I think it might have been Jale Jane Velez Mitchell, another friend of mine who is wonderful and Love great her. advocate for animals. And she was saying, you know, our society is so kind of anti-animal, where meaning you can't, like in Paris, you can bring a dog to the cafe. Um, and Jane said... I never got sick from a from a dog, but I get sick never. from people. I mean, you can bring kids that are, you know, spewing crumbs all over and spitting up and everything into a restaurant, but you can't bring a dog. So I mean, <laughs> I don't have my, kids, so, but yeah, I so you can't you. get an apartment. You can't take a dog into even an outdoor cafe sometimes. So that's hard. That's hard. You know. Although we changed the law recently in LA, the amazing uh, Julie Mancuso just work to change the law where it's up to the restaurant owner to allow dogs on the patio. Oh, okay. It's very, very, very new law. So this is really, there's a change. You know what? We see more and more and more dogs as family. Yes. But it takes time to change people's mind, not to see them as dirty animals because they sleep in my bed. 
and I'm not sick. <laughs> and I'm sure most people don't sleep in the bed and they're not sick. Right. I mean, and this kiss, is, kiss on the lips even, and you know. I read a study. I mean, we're doing full-on tonsil hockey here. <laughs> You know. I read a study, an article uh, yesterday about how uh, dogs licking us may improve our immune system. It's not dirty like we thought. So it's No. Like I mean, people have much more bacteria in the mouth, so it's actually way more dangerous to kiss another human being than a dog. <laughs> I mean, that's not my opinion. Right, I mean, right. it's research. Yes. It's research. That's research. So it's... Look, I really believe, and, and the dogs are the most magnificent thing, and the main thing is they light us, they light our heart, and, and we go into the world with a lighter step, you know, and every time you talk about dogs, you know, they did a research, and 11% um, uh, of women admitted that they miss their dogs more than their children. Oh, wow. Because a lot of women say, they miss the dog more than the husband. Yeah, we know yeah. that. I've said that one. <laughs> I would say that's like 90% or more. But 11%, and I believe it's even higher, wow. but it's so politically incorrect yeah. that only 11% admitted that they miss the dog more than the children. Because when you think about children, you can think about, oh boy, I need to do... Dogs are nothing but the source of joy. Right. And also, I believe the dogs are the best return, uh, return on investment. You put this much time into them and you get that much time in return. Mm -hmm. And they never go into puberty and adolescence. They're never, never going to want you to buy you. a cell phone and iPad and then go and smoke pot or, you know, get into that's, trouble. That's exactly. I mean, I think dogs are just a, a gift from God to us to remind us what love is. I really I'm, do. I'm with you, Tamar. And I think you're a gift from God to us and to thank the dogs. You, and uh, thank you so much for sharing and taking time with us today. Thank you. Thank you.